Hey everyone, uh, myself Surjit. I'm a cloud data engineer at Google. I've been working here for past two and a half years now. Uh, and I'll be walking uh, you through today the CICD portion of Dataflow and how we, we have talked a lot about how we build Dataflow pipelines and Beam and everything, but how do we actually deploy it in GCP and probably what are different patterns we can use in, in live environments to deploy these things. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, some basics before we jump into different type of data flow templates and we'll, I'll follow it with a demo. I have a recorded session uh, just in case uh, the live demo does not work, uh, but I'll try to show it live. Uh, uh, so to start with, to set the basic context, uh, CICD uh, is, is a software lifecycle process where you know it helps out to integrate your codes from different developers as well as the continuous delivery means you can deploy your code uh, as you build it and test it and integrate it so that your systems are robust and we catch any of the integration errors or uh, bugs in your code or any testing failures beforehand even if you do before you deploy a new change for this demo uh, i'll be using two of the gcp services uh, there's cloud source repository that that's nothing but a uh, code repo Alternatives are GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, and all those kind of other applications where you can store your code, uh, collaborate with other developers uh, in your organization or teams. A second is Cloud Build. Uh, cloud Build is a uh, lets you build your DevOps or deployment applications or your building applications using YAML. Uh, so you can integrate your your code repo with Cloud Build application. Uh, to run your code, it, it's same as automating. Let's suppose you're running a Python command locally. How would you do that in a live, you know, application in an automated manner rather than how you run a Python command locally? That's what Cloud Build does. Similar to Cloud Build, there are alternatives: uh, GitLab pipelines. Uh, I think GitLab Actions, uh, GitHub Actions also fits into this category. So, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll be using the G GCP services for now. Uh, let's talk about uh, different type of data flow templates. Uh, this is a one concept where you know uh, new adopters of data flow uh, who want to write their Beam code and run into data flow gets confused. So a data flow template is uh, uh, you know it lets you package your data flow code uh, so it's it, it's easier to share and deploy. And there are two types of data flow templates: uh, Flex and Classic. Flex templates uh, lets you build a Docker image where you can package your uh, all your code dependency into a Docker file, and and it also creates a specification file in cloud storage. So when you launch Dataflow, you references that Docker image to launch your Dataflow pipeline. Um, and in classic templates, it's just a JSON serialization of your Dataflow graph. So when it launches. Dataflow tries to get all the dependencies from public internet and downloads it. So think of it as a, in a way that uh, with Flex, uh, I work work with uh, different use cases where we don't have public access. So in that case, they use a Docker image, download all their packages and their CI/CD process, and deploy the data flow. Since the data flow is restricted to go via internet, it does not, it cannot go and fetch PyPy packages or whatever packages you want. And in classic template is when data flow launches, it says, okay, I got the data flow graph. I need these, these libraries. I tried to get this from internet. So that's a major difference. Uh, classic templates is kind of a little bit legacy. Uh, flex template is what we uh, use for any new development. Uh, I'll be timing classic templates today. Uh, to walk you through different components that we have. There's another template uh, that uh, uh, terminology that we use is Google provided data for templates. It's it's not a, another of way of packaging your code. It's just Google pre-built 30 to 40 templates, which lets you do your work. Uh, so common patterns, like if you want to move data, you can directly invoke the template from the GCP UI or launch it via G Cloud without uh, you know writing a single line of code it helps you do a lot of uh, work directly out of the box uh, so this is uh, a high level architecture of how our cd cd process will look like you, we use cloud source repository to push our check out our code first and 
you can integrate that with cloud build so cloud build can start building your application code either via a commit whenever some somebody commits into the code uh, into the repo or you can invoke it manually or when a tag is created uh, and then in cloud build you define your steps that needs to follow to build your template build your classic template or a flex template so uh, since we are uh, doing classic template as a demo you, you I, i'll be building a template in cloud build where i define set of commands and yaml file which will uh, build my template and send my json serialized file on, on a cloud storage bucket and from there uh, another task will start which will use that deployed uh, that file in the gcs and try to deploy data flow Moving ahead, uh, these are two commands, uh, which, which while I was building this demo, I tested with these two commands, and then I automated via YAML. The two commands which separates your build and deploy method is you, you, build, you have your Python code and you just build it with some specifications and you provide some required uh, variables, staging location, like that's where your all your stage libraries can data first going to try to download all the packages is going to be stored uh, the template location this is basically where your specification file goes so now you have built your template that means it's compiled without any errors and everything is good we have your packages you can fire a deploy command a run command which will just look at that template and use the template the, the serialized graph to start your data flow uh, job so I'm just going to switch my screens here to walk you through the demo that I have. So this is a, a basic code that I've built for this one. Uh, basic Python code, which just reads the data, uh, parses your CSV rows and write into a big query. Uh, nothing complex here. Uh, and I've given the requirements file here, what it needs to start. And this is the main file uh, that I have so basically it's essentially the commands that I had, I, I tried to put it in the YAML format. Uh, even before running this, uh, we need a GCS bucket. I have segregated this into the location where my classic template will go once it's, uh, it's pre-built, once it's built, input data that I'm using for this demo and staging in temporary locations. Now let's walk through uh, this bucket. So. Over here, I'm, I kept it in the same repo, so I'm just defining the repository I need to pull uh, when when my code is going to start. It's essentially the same repo, uh, and I'm just doing some movement between my directories, changing directories and everything. Then I'm downloading all my dependencies, which is needed to build, build my graph locally. So when you start development, you might download Apache Beam, secrets manager or xyz's library so even the cloud build instance to build it it needs all those dependencies on the cloud build instance to start so that's what it's basically doing the next two commands are what we saw uh, in the presentation i just have kept it in a yaml file passing all the parameters which is essentially building your template and finally uh, the last command is what will deploy this to the data flow so this is how i define it then I switch to the cloud build page where I've uh, you know, created a trigger and attach it to my particular repo uh, that I had in cloud source repository. So let's see, I'm gonna edit and show you some of the configurations that I have done. So the basic event and everything. So you can define multiple events. Uh, so if you use GitLab, Bitbucket, you can, whenever somebody creates a merge request, you can start this, uh, you know, select these kind of options. If you want to invoke your building of your code as per merge request, you can do that. Um, I'm using cloud source repositories. You can also use other repositories as well. It has, I think it has integration with GitHub and GitLab as well. Uh, I've specified which branch I want to run this on and invocation I've kept as manual for now uh, because for demo, I'll be triggering this manually. And I've defined in my repository uh, where is my YAML file. You can also write your YAML inline, 
but it's always easier in production systems you have a file and checked out uh, somewhere so that's what my uh, configuration is for cloud build i'm just going to go back now i'm going to start my executions uh, it, it takes like two to three minutes to complete the executions yeah so over here when you start you can potentially say like which it has all the different uh, variables that we configured you can start you can also build your code based on any of the commit hash uh, as well but for now i'm just going to take the latest commit so if i just say branch it's going to start the code winner on the latest commit so if i click on show so these are all the steps that we defined like checking out the code changing the directory installing the libraries it's it's going to take like two minutes to do that uh, it's going to build the template and as well as finally it's going to install the template or uh, launch the template okay anyways i guess i'll probably walk through the recording here it's essentially the same thing that i walked through so once once the uh, all the deployments are all the installations go through uh, it's going to start the next step uh, which is a step three of building your template and finally the deployment so once it's complete it, you're going to see all the three checks uh, as you can see the step two was installing all your dependencies then it builds builds the templates so while building it, it expects you have that file somewhere to package it and that's where we got the error here so once you build it it will send your uh, file to cloud storage bucket uh, and also the final step the step four is where it's going to launch the template so once we build it you can see it, it, like everything happened and it started the template job that we have defined there and on the gcs side this is a path where we defined our template specification or json serialized graph would go so that's where it put the graph there and the other buckets that we have like staging it will have all the dependency installed in that particular staging bucket which can data for is going to refer eventually to, to get the packages and install it in on its own system uh, so it has a dot pb file which is a pipeline file and all the other dependencies that it has and the last i have a data flow page as well yeah so that's how your job looks like when the data flow starts uh, and it's basically, as I said, it's a basic pipeline which reads data from GCS and write to BigQuery. That is the recording. So what else, right? So we did in the past, uh, in, the, in the previous step, we used Cloud Build for building and deploying your template as well, right? But what if you know, there, there are use cases, you not always deploy your pipeline with Cloud Build. Probably your production cycle is not yet there, or you know whatever the timelines are not not right and everything. So that's where we have split it into build and deploy. Uh, as you see, I ran two commands to build it and deploy it. So once you build it, you have your file, your spec file, your JSON serialized file on GCS. Once you have that in GCS, you can use it with other tools uh, to deploy your data for pipeline. So there are tools which in, which you, you can pass the similar type of variables. You can launch it via Terraform. You can launch it via Cloud Composer. You can also start your pipeline with Cloud Functions. Like let's suppose you get a notification and you want even driven notification, you want to launch your data flow on some notification. You can use Cloud Functions as well as you can use Cloud Workflows as well. So all this, the variables that you pass uh, with all this application essentially remain same. Uh, it just helps you to orchestrate your data pipelines better uh, since you can d divide your build and deploy pieces. So for something like streaming, you might probably use, uh, since streaming you launch once and it keeps on running forever, uh, you can probably use a gcloud uh, command as well, or you can use another, other, another service uh, which lets you schedule your cron. So you can use that as well in your application. On the next slide, I've included uh, how you will run your flex templates. Uh, this will send you to a GCP uh, documentation page, which walks you through how you will build a Docker image if you want to deploy your uh, flex template, as well as I've included a link of Google provided templates that we have 
uh, which lets you, you know, do a lot of lot of the uh, patterns that we have outside. It lets you uh, figure out like build those even without writing a single line of code. 